exiting the building, he hopped into the taxi that was waiting outside. Thanks for waiting. Can you get me to Dogen Saka ASAP? Son of a bitch. Mina recover bristled. I beg your pardon? <laughs> that son of a bitch you wanted to give a piece of your mind, sir. Was he waiting for you like expected? <laughs> okay, for a second I thought he was angry that we made him wait. But since we're paying him, I guess he doesn't care. Oh yeah. And I damn well did him give a give him a piece of my mind too. Haha, <laughs> glad to hear it, sir. The taxi sped off. Amazing, we fucking did it. I think we cleared Mina Recover's hour now, hopefully. Nope, still not. Mina Recover pulled out the proposal and looked it over again. The idea for the surveillance story revolved around the claim that hidden cameras had been installed throughout Shibuya's shopping districts, upwards of 500 of them. Supposedly, these had eliminated lots of blind spots and the crime rate in the area had dropped significantly. The cameras were managed by Daisuke Endo, the owner of Endo Electronics and chairman of the local downtown committee. That was Minorikawa's first mission then. He needed to get this guy's story. I dig the music right now. Scanning the side of the road, Minorikawa finally spotted a rundown electronics shop. The sign out front, which looked like it might fall off at any moment, read Endo Electronics. Right here is fine. The taxi stopped and Mino Recover pulled a 10,000 yen bill from his wallet. Keep the change, he said. So that's a hundred dollars? Or about a hundred euros, I think? What? Look, don't sweat it. The name's Minoru Mino Recover, and I'm a freelance writer. I care about two things. What's real and what's true. There's real worth to what you've done for me. That there is a token of my appreciation. It's not much, but please, take it. Mino Recover slid out of the taxi and headed for the electronics store. He's such a great guy. God damn it, I love him. Inside, Endo Ele Electronics looked more like a mountain of all the junk than an actual business. Towering piles of ancient appliances stretched towards the ceiling. Old television sets with dial knobs leaned against computers with 5-inch floppy drives. A storage medium for personal computers in production from 1976 to 2001. Really? They did still get produced in 2001? I recently found one of those, but sadly I don't have a um, floppy drive anymore to read them. I did also find a 8 megabyte SD card though. <laughs> And I'm looking forward to see what's on it. Um, anyway, I don't think that's important. What possible use could there be for all of this outstated stuff? Mr. Endo, are you in here? Mino Recover called out. Nobody came to greet him. The shop was definitely open though. Surely the proprietor hadn't left it unattended. Hey, Mr. Endo, come on, I know you're in there. After a short wait, Mino Recover heard sounds from the living space behind the shop. A door opened to reveal a tired-looking, middle-aged man. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Are you Mr. Endo? Mino Recover asked. I am, the man said guardedly. And I'm sorry, but I'm in the middle of something at the moment. Could you come back tomorrow? Please, just give me a minute. I'm a freelance writer. Name's Mino Recover. Mino Recover showed Endo his business card. I'm writing an article for four-star general gossip. Hmm, a magazine piece, huh? Precisely, so if you could... If I could just have a little of your time today. Oh, who's calling whom? The phone rang, cutting him off before he could get down to business. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me for a moment. And reached into the clutter and pulled out the telephone. <laughs> Hello, and electronics? The proprietor listened for a moment, then raised an eyebrow. Yeah, that's a problem, alright. Alright, understood. I'll try and get a hold of the customer then. Ender set the receiver back down. What was that all about? Mino Recover asked. Oh, yesterday I sold a dry ice machine, and the manufacturer just called to let me know the model is defective. Defective? Apparently once it starts making dry ice, it won't stop. I need to tell the customer I have to recall the machine and refund the deposit. Please give me a moment. Endo sifted through some sales slips, read a number off of one and made a phone call. What what is the oh are these light bulbs? Okay.
Nobody picked up on the other end, however. That's right, he grumbled to himself. He said they had some performance today. Performance? Minori Kava asked. I sold it to a guy from some theater troupe. They called it Wandering Angels or something. We've read about this earlier. The theater troupe run by Shinosuke Uwa, right? Since we'll go there later anyway. Why don't we fucking tell him about it? I don't know. The Wandering Angels? That was Shinosuke Oarai's theater troupe. Minorikawa had an interview with him, booked for 2.30. Anyhow, what can I do for you? Minorikawa hastily explained what he was after. Endo gave him a dubious look. As I said earlier, I'm a bit busy right now. Busy cleaning up, I hope. How do you get anything done in this mess? Why are you... Are you this rude to all your interview subjects? Five minutes! Just give me five minutes of your time, please. You've got to be joking. Go on, get the hell out of here. Did Minori Kava try to go for a nag there or something? Endo handed for his back room in a half. Fine, then I'll just have to write about what you've already told me. Namely, that Endo Electronics sells defective merchandise. Damn, son. Dayon. Did he really just fucking threaten him? <laughs> huh, just what are you implying? Did you or did you not sell that theater troop a defective piece of equipment? Look, I'm going to get in touch with them as soon as... I'm betting they're in a hurry preparing for the performance. I doubt you'll be getting through to them today. Endo bit his lip. Now that I have your attention, Minorikawa said. Let's make a deal. What kind of deal? I'm meeting with a member of the Wandering Angels a little later today. I can let them know about the dry ice machine for you. In exchange, all you have to do is give me my interview. Endo scowled. And where's your proof that you'll be meeting with the Wandering Angels? I may take advantage of a guy when he's down, Minorika replied. But one thing I'm not is a liar. The shopkeeper took a few moments to think about it. Fine, he grumbled. Five minutes, that's all you get. Mina Recover whipped his notepad out of his coat like he was drawing a gun. <laughs> then let's get right down to it, shall we? Go right ahead. So I hear that over 500 surveillance cameras have been installed throughout Shibuya's shopping districts. Yes, that's right. Why so many? We used to have a lot of delinquents in town. Young people who act rowdy or cause trouble, often at arcades or convenience store parking lots, and who frequently resort to petty theft, theft and other mischief. Also referred to, in more outmoded, outmoded terms? That's a weird word. As ruffians or hoodlums. Endo said the word with marked distaste. Even though he knows that his son is... Well, but she isn't necessarily a delinquent, he just looks like one. Oh yeah, I remember there being some problem kids around. They were real punks. They vandalized my signs, made a mess of my storehouse. They were just awful. I see. Mino recovers scribbled diligently in his notepad. Heck, my own son put together a sort of vigilante squad to help teach those punks a lesson. Wait. Vigilante squad? Well, hold up right there for a sec. Mino Recover jetted out his hand to interrupt. This guy's son was part of the Vigilante Squad? What a stroke of luck! Maybe you could also provide some info for the article on the gangs of Shibuya. Sorry, I don't mean to get too far off topic here, but could you tell me the name of this group your son belongs to? They call themselves SOS, as we know, the studs of Shibuya. Prided themselves on being the top gang in Shibuya and all that. The top gang in Shibuya? Did I really just hit a jackpot right there? Not to pat myself on the back, but... Go me! <laughs> All I have to do is step outside and the story finds me. I think I might be a natural at this. As it happens. As it happens, I'd also like to interview people from SOS. Would you be able to put me in touch with your son? Yeah, sure, but you should know that my son isn't in the gang anymore. Oh, is this a jump point? Do we want to jump? Or not right now? Do we even need to jump to Achi at 11.50? What was the last thing we knew about him? You know what? Let's play this game the way it was meant to be played and let's fucking jump.
Okay. I remember now, they were waiting for the van. Hit me, look. Oh, oh, fuck. Was that his voice? That was. I think that was his voice. A blue van had appeared nearby, parked in a spot that had been empty previously. Achi couldn't see it was inside, but there was definitely something fishy about it. Besides, there weren't any other blue cars around, so this had to be it. You've been right, the crooks had come back after all. I'm gonna go take a quick look, Achi said. You wait here. But before he could carry out his plan, Hitomi jumped to her feet. Without a word, she rushed towards the van. Hold on, I said wait! She wasn't slowing down. He should be quicker than her. Achi caught hold of her arm. Wait, this could be dangerous. What if the kidnapper's in there? And what if my sister's in there? I have to go help her. Achi knew full well what it was like to be impulsive, but this was one situation where cooler heads would have to prevail. You can't just hang out here. Oh, sorry, it was her. We can't just hang out here, she insisted. What if the car takes off again? That's why I said I was gonna go take a look first. But isn't that dangerous? What if they do something to my sister because some random guy comes snooping around? Oh, um, yeah, you got a point. A chief fought as fast as he could. The criminal told Hitomi to get into the van. There had to be some specific reason for that. They also want to kidnap her. What if they were planning to abduct her as well? Exactly. Whatever the case, he couldn't just let her go. Let's go together then. You had to make a snap decision. Look, just let me go first. I don't want to put you at any risk. Okay, let's go together then. Does that work for you? Yes. Let's go together. Please, we have no idea who or what we might run into. Hitomi gave a slight nod. Alright, she said. But let me go first and you follow, okay? Eh, let's go... You know, let's go side by side, maybe? Got it, Achi replied. Okay, guess that's the plan then. Achi waited as Hitomi started walking, then followed her at a distance so it wouldn't look like they were together. It's not like they could see them from afar, speaking to each other. <laughs> she headed straight for the van. Oh, look, more foreigners. Two men got out of the car, neither of them Japanese. Achi picked up his pace in case he needed to close the distance first. One of the men approached Hitomi and said something to her. She gave an affirming nod. We fucking knew it. Suddenly the two men grabbed her from either side. They dragged her to the van and shoved her into the back seat. Go on, Achi. He broke into a sprint. Of course it was a trap. He could guess what their whole plan was, but kidnapping Hitomi was obviously part of it. That's why one of them ran after her before. You both are dum dums. Before he could reach the vehicle, the door slid shut. Is this a bad end? Should Achi really have checked alone? The van sped off an instant later. Achi raced after it. He ran as hard as he could, thinking of nothing else. He couldn't give up now. Couldn't let things end like this. He'd made a promise. No quitting halfway. And no turning his back on someone in trouble. Bad end. But the car kept getting further and further away. Before long, it was just a blue speck that vanished into the cityscape. No! Yes, I say, Achi. Achi never saw Hitomi again. Okay. Wrong decision, I guess. Number 10, lost sight of the van. Let's select the hint. Achi did try to warn Hitomi that checking out the van by herself was dangerous. And oh, look, she got herself kidnapped. Maybe she, he should have put his foot down and checked on things himself first. Okay, okay, game. Okay, I just wanted to, you know, not make her mad. So let's see. You had to make a snap decision. Let me go first. Whoops. There it is. Hitomi's determination wavered at the look in Achi's eyes. Please, he continued, we have no idea who or what we might run into. If I think they're gonna try to run off again, I'll give some signal. Then you can come along, and I doubt they'll be interested in leaving there. He to me gave a reluctant nod. Please be careful. Will do. And tell me if my sister's in there. I will. You can count on it. Oh, Achi. He's also great. I really like him as well. Achi stepped out into the open and started walking towards the van. 
He tried his best to look as if he wasn't paying it any attention. Yep, I'm just an ordinary passerby. <laughs> as he got nearer, he tried to sneak a glimpse inside. The van's dark window film made it hard to see who might be inside, or even how many people. Casually, he moved closer still to get a better look. Uh, suddenly the sliding door burst open and several people jumped out. None of them were Japanese. Within moments, Achi was surrounded. Hey guys! What? what? Hey, what's the deal? Achi said. He let out a little chuckle. <laughs> Man, that thing must be packed. It's like a clown car. <laughs> How many seats you got in that thing anyway? He took another step towards the vehicle and looked inside. Whoa, dude! One of the men pulled a knife from inside his jacket, thrusting it out in Achi's direction. He'd probably meant it as a super threat, but on reflex, Achi went into self defense mode, kicking him right in the jaw. <laughs> oh, fuck my controller. I really need. Whoops. <sighs> Sorry. Um, I really need to unplug it whenever I play Shibuya Scramble. There was a loud crack as his foot connected. The man dropped out like a light. The other stared, then rushed him. Oh shit! He told me run! <laughs> well, this sure hadn't gone as planned. Too late to take it back now. <laughs> the damage was done. Achi was just going to have to take out the rest of these punks too. He nimbly shifted his feet, evading the initial attack. Having to take these guys on 3 to 1 wasn't going to be pretty. <laughs> he to me is like, You fucked it up, Achi! Achi! He heard Hitomi cry out. Crap. He hadn't given any signal, but she had come out of hiding anyway. Hitomi, stay back! How was he supposed to fight off three guys and protect her at the same time? What could he do? What should he do? No, got no decision time? Oh. Within moments, a number of passersby had gathered around to fight. Maybe they'd heard Hitomi shouting. I bet they think it's some kind of setup or something. Hey, what's going on? Oh my god, is that a knife? This ain't just some petty squabble. Someone call the police. Some of them began taking photos with their cell phones. Oh, that's not bad. One of the men cursed in frustration, then signaled for his buddies to get back into the car. What a blessing in disguise. But she couldn't stop them. The engine roared to life and the van sped away. Knowing he'd never catch them on foot, Achi merely watched it go. You fucked it up though. <laughs> you really fucked it up. He'd failed. This was his fault. All of it. I mean... What was he supposed to do there, really? Achi bit his lip hard. How could he possibly face it to me now? Uh, Achi... Hitomi's voice was hollow empty, but she stared down at his feet like a scolded child. I'm sorry, I I didn't see whether your sister was in there or not. I see. Words so simple and matter of fact stung him to the heart. I'm so, so sorry. But Hitomi simply shook her head. The fact that she wasn't even chewing him out made him feel all the worse. I know I'm... Oh no. I know I messed up by... Uh, he was going to say, I'll make up for it. Somehow, but he froze with fear at what he saw next. Oh, um, what? Across the street, staring at them, was the man with the cane. He's Japanese, though. Where does he fit in? Hitomi, it's him. They had to get out of here. He grabbed Hitomi by the hand and bolted down Dogen Saka. The assassin followed, staying on his side of the road. How can he fucking follow them, running with goddamn cane? But she wasn't sure what to do. And also he's running around with the fucking gun. There should be a panic if someone sees him. Should they try heading into the Alice and Side Street again? No, it was more dangerous to head someplace where there'd be fewer witnesses. Best to stick to Dogen Saka for now. The man wouldn't be able to gun them down if they managed to lose themselves in a crowd along center guy first. Besides, the guy had to use a cane. Achi and Hitomi could outrun him. How did he even find them? Hand in hand, they sped, sped along Dogensaka and through the intersection in front of the 109 building. Come on, Hitomi, just a little further. Okay. She was panting, but she pressed on. Brave girl. But she risked a glance back over his shoulder. Huh? He stopped in surprise. 
The guy was gone, but there's Kano! What's wrong? Hitomi asked. Guy, he's not following us. The slope leading down to the intersection wasn't all that steep. Several plainclothes detectives had, have been hiding amidst the crowd in the intersection as part of the kidnapping stakeout. Right now, Director Kose is sending a message to all officers over the wireless, and so the detectives have stopped to listen in. It's a bit unusual, an observant individual might notice. Oh, we see police, dude! It was strange that the gunman hadn't bothered to pursue. Still, there was no time to worry about his behavior right now. Hitomi, can you still run? Yes, I'm alright. Then this is our chance this way. So he's police! Or what? I don't get it. They needed to put plenty of distance behind them before the assassin came after them again. But they also needed to find the van again and rescue Hitomi's sister. What do? Would they be able to find it and yet stay hidden from the man with the cane? But she wasn't sure one way or the other, but with Hitomi and Tao, he hurried onward along Santa Guy. Ah, to be continued. But I sure hope we've finished a cheese story for this hour now. Should be quite late, 11.50, right? Yeah, 11.55, it's a TBC. Sure, Tama also has a TBC. Uh, Kano has a TBC at 11.55. So uh, all we can do is hope that Osawa can now progress and that we can also continue with Mina Recover. Damn, that was a kind of long Mina Recover segment. I won't be able to fit it in one video, I think. So I'll have to cut it up a bit or something. I don't know. So, next video, either Mina Recover or Osawa. And some more fucking ridiculous story, I guess. Bye.